Hello class, it's Philip Seagraves. Had a few things in our lecture today that I wanted to just highlight that we didn't quite have enough time. We really only missed a couple of minutes toward the end of class there, so I just wanted to get another minute or two with you so that you guys were adequately prepared for the quiz that's coming up next week. Stay tuned and make sure you put out any questions you have. Put those out on the discussion board and answer each other's questions as much as you can and I'll chime in as well. We can do this a lot better if we all work together as a team. Okay, today we spent uh, some time wrapping up process control. So we're in this area of our, of our class. And we really kind of got to the end there and we were discussing process capability. And how do we measure that? How do we measure process capability? And how do we calculate the measures? And how can we make sure that we're doing it properly and understanding whether the process that we're working with is actually capable of delivering the type of, of result that we intend. So the result that we intend would typically be called our design specification. This is what we expect the product or the service to deliver. And as we can see here, it's shown by this bracket up here, showing this is our specification. We expect the average of our process to be here, and we expect to have no more defects than these two ranges. This is our lower control limit and our upper control limit up here. We can see a process here that's not capable of meeting specifications all the time because some values are going to fall way out here under the tail of this curve. Some are going to fall out here above the upper control limit. And in this case, we have the same type of design specification, but we have a process this time that is capable. We're going to see that the values that fall in this normal random distribution are going to fall within our design specification most of the time. Well, let's take a look at how a process that is in specification, that does meet the specification, in fact, it meets it very well. We have plenty of room here. However, that design or that process itself can be off-center. It may fit within the boundaries, but we can see that the average is too high. In this case, we're going to get some values out here beyond the upper control limit that are going to fail or are going to be defects. So let's figure out some a way to calculate using our historical data and our design specification whether our process is going to be capable of delivering the results that we expect. The primary measure is called a process capability index or called CPK. And in this case, we're going to take a look at X bar, which is the average of our sample means. So if we have multiple samples, each sample has a mean, we're going to average all of those sample means, and we end up with what's called X bar bar. And in this case, we're going to look at the minimum, the lesser of these two, the upper and the lower control limits. The lower one would be our X bar bar, which is our average minus our lower specification limit divided by 3 sigma, our standard deviation. And our upper specification limit minus x bar bar divided by 3 sigma or 3 standard deviations as well. Let's take a look at the math and how that would work. In this case we have a, a net weight or a specification on our product that's 9 ounces plus or minus a half ounce. We have historically found that the process mean is delivering us, or the average is delivering us 8.8 .8 ounces. And the standard deviation is 12, uh, uh, 12 tenths of an ounce, 12 hundredths of an ounce, 0.12. So in this case, we'll take X bar bar, which is our process mean of 8.8, .8, subtract our lower specification limit, and divide that by 3 sigma. So we know that 8.8 .8 is our average. 8.5, which is 9 minus our 0.5, gives us our, our first value. We'll divide that by 3 times sigma, which is our standard deviation, so that would be 0.36. So 8.8 .8 minus 8.5 divided by 0.36. And our other value is 9.5 minus 8.8, .8, 
divided by 3 times sigma again. Now what we want to do is take whichever one of these values is the least, is the one that we're going to work with. In this case, the lower value is 0.83. And a CPK that's less than 1 tells us that our process is not capable. Our process is not capable. So what you, if you think about what we're doing here, is we are determining whether half of our value, which would be the middle, or our average, minus our upper or lower control limit, and we're using three in this case, which is each side of our distribution. In this case, we want to make sure that we're fitting in three standard deviations here and three standard deviations here. So we want to find out if the distance here in our specification matches up with the distance that we're going to find on this curve. So if that ends up being less than one, we're going to have a situation like this because we have this distance right here is going to be less than the distance that we have right here. So that's going to be less than one from our process mean to this control limit is going to be less than three times uh, sigma. So in that case we have a process that's not capable because that leaves these guys out here. Some of our values are going to fall out beyond it. So let's take a look at what that means in terms of of our process capability. As I've just said, a process that can, it yields a CPK of less than one is not capable. If one is capable, it's capable at three sigma, which is what we just talked about. Since we're using the value three sigma as the denominator, and three sigma would indicate the distance using three sigma in the case of this one, if this were three sigma as we measure from our design specification center, out to the tail of our distribution, three sigma. It's going to be capable at three sigma. And if you follow the math, it would be capable at four sigma at 1.33, five sigma, 1.67, and you simply double the three, and you get it's at a CPK of two, we're going to be capable at six sigma. Okay, well that's really the only thing that I had intended to cover today that we got left off for a few minutes, plus I added a little bit there. So hopefully that helps everyone. And if you guys have some questions or things that you need to email me about over the next few days leading up to the quiz, I'd be happy to take those emails. I will be out of town over the weekend, but we'll be uh, hopefully I'll be able to check in at the hotel and check email, but definitely we'll be able to do that on Monday. You guys have a great week, have a great Friday, great weekend and Monday, and look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday. See you guys later. Bye.